I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silverquill. Do not trust the bongos, they are full of pretentiousness. Oh, you mean those bongos? Uh, uh, yes, the snap, snap bongos. Let's see here. What could I snap in reply? Oh! Ah! Oh! <laughs> uh, also joining us today is Totara. You, you can worry about the bongos for me. I have to worry about the fire and lava and all that stuff because fire is my weakness. No need to get hot under the collar. It's all cool, my friend. Black fire is black. Uh, I don't know poetry! Oh, boys, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 9, Sweet and Smoky, when Spike and Fluttershy go with Smolder to the Dragonlands to help cheer up her sensitive brother. They find out that the dragon eggs aren't hatching. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! So, anywho, uh, before we start, first impressions are in order. Silver. Well, this one's a bit of a toughie because you get to see a lot of the Dragonlands. You get to see more of Smolder uh, and Ember and Garble <laughs> and the other three idiots and all that good stuff. You get to see Fluttershy in some very unique roles. Oh, how far oh, she's yes. come! Oh yes, but but. You also have, well, a retcon. Oh? Uh, trying to supply, well, go in depth on this, but basically supply new info that's meant to make you reinterpret past info, and therein can be a clash. Hmm. I got that feeling when I first watched this, yes. All right. But anywho, what about you, Tara? Mm, my first impressions for me, it was decent at first. Because, you know, like pretty much what Silver said, how... Um, I forget the, that one word. What was that word again? Retcon. That that's it. Retcon. Oh, retroactive continuity. Yes, and we we also get to see more Smolder because I feel like she doesn't get enough screen time. But at least this one, we it's basically almost a Smolder episode, almost. True, 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 true. And that recent AMA on Twitter that Big Jim Miller did, like he wished he could have done more with the student six. So yeah. But now he can't do a spinoff series because it would take copious amounts of money just to get everyone back together. And not only that, Hasbro needs to greenlight it. <laughs> oh, boys. But in all honesty, like, the student didn't really get much play in this season. Like, I would have thought that this would be their season. Everyone was complaining it was their last season was their season. What, Really? Oh, yeah, people are, are all myth because they're like, oh, the student six are taking over, but we want the main six. Me! <laughs> Me! Well, Apparently, if the Brony fandom is made of cats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boys. Goodness me. But anyway, as for me, um, this episode was a lot of fun. Um, we get to see a lot of the Dragonlands and so on. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is be repeating what Silver and Terra has been saying. But I do like Fluttershy here. Like, Fluttershy's attitude towards dragons has changed a lot from season one. Like, there's eight seasons worth of development for her not to be afraid of dragons anymore. But anywho, um, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And well, let's start off the episode with a bang. We start off with... Smolder going to the teacher's lounge and talking up to Twilight, asking for permission to skip a few classes. And Twilight says she's cool with it. She's cool with it. I'll just be back tomorrow or something like that. And Smolder says, nah, I have to go for a week. So no, that can't do, that can't do. And everybody asks why. So long story short, she has a brother. Brother's not feeling well. She has to go there and cheer up. And also there's the dragon hatching season, something like that. Hearing that, Fluttershy goes goo goo gaga over it. And well, we have our crew. Our crew of characters who are going to the Dragonlands. Anywho, um, Silver, what do you think? Well, okay. One, is it's nice to see Smolder uh, being proactive on something, including looking after her brother. The last time we heard her mention her brother was during the molts for Spike. And she's like, I love my brother, but as soon as he started to smell, we kicked him out. <laughs> but Fluttershy is simultaneously adorable, which you cannot say no to that face. If you do, you have no heart. <laughs> so true. 
But here's the thing. Twilight is, is making a big concern. Oh, uh, one of my students is going to be gone for a week. What are you going to do when your teacher is gone for a week? You're arguably your best teacher, according to the polls. <laughs> it's so true. So from true. the students. So true. But in all honesty, I feel like Smolder. Okay, twi- my my logic here is when if Twilight is worried about Smolder missing a week's worth of class, it's because that she's not a pony local. Like she has to catch up really hard just to get back on track. With Fluttershy, there's always substitute that can take her place for a week. No one can take Fluttershy's face. You take that back. For teaching, I just said no teaching one can, purposes. I, I just said no one could take Fluttershy's face. They better not. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I'm like, wait, did that come out right? <laughs> it did not. It did not at all. Well, anywho, <clears throat> Tara, what about you? Oh, for me, I mean, I'm curious about the bo- brother because she's small to saying, oh, he's, my brother is very sweet. And I'm like, oh, okay, so maybe we'll get a dragon that's around Spike's height, maybe. And, I mean, Silva already explained about how Fluttershy is so adorable, that face, and who could resist that face? <laughs> but I also like, too, how she's not that scared of dragons no more and how she used to be. I, I don't know about that, though. She's never been scared of baby dragons. That That's what we established way back in uh, Dragon Shy. Because he's an adorable baby dragon, but she is going to be a lot bolder with medium size. We've yet to see how she handles giant dragons, mostly because those have disappeared from the show. Yeah, that's actually true. We don't see a lot of them now. You think Dragon Lord Ember would have a few more uh, big guns on hand? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, huh. you know what? I got no excuse. I, I got no excuse. I got no explanation. I'm... The only explanation I could say is that has to really the one name in the show anymore. <laughs> oh, but that makes me sad because I, I like dragons. I like the big dragon. Yeah, I know. I like the blue eyes white dragon. That's right. Kaiba kind of got nothing on us. Yeah. But anywho, let's continue on. So the group composing of Spike, Smolder, and Fluttershy head to the Dragonlands by foot. Wow. Do you think they go by train first, then foot? Because that's a real question that needs to be answered, but later. So anywho, they go to the Dragonlands by foot, and once they reach there, it's all sulfury and painful. Even walking there barefoot, that hurts. Ouch, that's my life. So Smolder just says that, oh, um, this is usually where my brother hangs out. I'm going to go fly off and find him. Fluttershy says to Spike, um, I'm going to go look for Amber and those baby eggs, so I'll see you later. And Spike here quilts his friendship blanket. No, um, it's comfort blanket for smallest little brother or brother. So we see Fluttershy sneaking around to the dragon eggs and cooing over them. Oh, that's so adorable. Amber <laughs> says, who are you and what are you doing here? And oh yeah, you're you're the shy one. Yes, yes, yes. You ponies all look alike. So they talk. Uh, that species is. <laughs> so anywho, uh, uh, they talk for a bit, and Fluttershy says, "Oh, um, I'll help you, Lord Ember. This is gonna be fun." And I'm gonna pause here for a bit. So, um, changing gears. Tara, what do you think? Well, I do like how you know. She t- like when Spike's um pulling out his list, he's like, "Hey, what should we do to cheer him up?" And then the first thing he says is singing the smile song, and it's like, <laughs> "Wait, what?" <laughs> Continuity. Oh, he said it, not me. It's also true. It's also true. I'll, but I'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> but then after, of course, Fluttershy being adorable with the eggs, and we we get to see Am Am. Em- uh, is it Am? No, it's Ember. Ember. <laughs> hmm? And we get to see Ember again, and. It's actually funny how she, I guess you could say she mentions a ship name when she tries to get fl- guess Fluttershy's name, but she calls her Apple Dash. <laughs> As we will later learn, Team Apple Dash cannot be stopped. Oh, yeah. It's been confirmed Apple Dash is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Dash has always been a thing. Oh, but those Rare Jack fans. Mm. Oh, yeah, the Rare Jack. I continue on. <laughs> Uh, that's all I got so far. <laughs> Alrighty then. 
Silver, what about you? Well, Fluttershy is taking something of a big risk here. Uh-huh. Uh, going into the Dragonlands unannounced and getting near close to their eggs, any, th- any creature in the wild is going to flip its wig if you try to approach its its nest of eggs uh, without permission. Okay, and, you know, in the real world, you can't, like, go, go up to a bird and say, can I have permission to go up to your nest? <laughs> Thank you. So that'd be you. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's Fluttershy being very presumptuous. She's lucky it's Ember who showed up and not some other dragon. So I got to say, they uh, she could be she could exercise a little bit more tact. But I can't deny that uh, baby talk Fluttershy is pretty adorable. Yep, yep, that's true. Thank you. That's it's true. Gucci Koo. <laughs> that's so true. I mean, she, and then she just says all, goes into baby talk, which, come on, we, we all have our version of baby, day, of baby talk. Oh, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy, boy, boy. Boys. Yep, yep. And I will, I will agree with Spike. When you're feeling down, the smile song, or as I call it, the Brony National Anthem, <laughs> wh- is so catchy. Yep. So darn catchy. Yep. That the smile song is awesome, by the way. Like that song is just magnificent. Oh yeah, it never uh, gets old. Yep, yep. Uh only second to it is uh, winter wrap up. Yep. Okay, so I'm okay now. <laughs> so but we but we've yet to we've yet to cross the real dun 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 yep, yep. moments. Yep, yep. And that's from me, yeah. Um Fluttershy, presumptuous, like, announce yourself first. Like, you just came in without... (sighs) Boy, at least she's alive. At least she's alive. So, anywho. Yes. Moving on. Spike has finished uh, knitting the comfort blanket. And guess who's here? (laughs) Ah, Garble and his crew of friends. Oh, God. And yeah, let's just say that this moment here is not great at all. So yeah, Spike tries to defend himself and yeah, he fails, he fails. Can't do anything about it. So before Garble and his crew of gang try to beat up on Spike, Smolder comes in and just says, Hey, brother, you're here. Or was it Garble and stuff? It was Garble. They do, yeah. <laughs> uh, they do the high five thing and yay, they're connected and something like that. Spike pushes her away and says that Garble is not a very nice dragon. We should, like, leave. And Smolder says, um, Garble's my brother. Say what now? What? That's not true. That's impossible. Search your feeling. You know it to be true. No! No! <laughs> Don't make another movie with us. <laughs> But anywho, uh, Silver, what do you think, man? Like, wow, wow, wow. Wow, I tell you. <laughs> okay. When I first heard this, I thought back to, again, what Smolder <laughs> said about kicking her brother out when he was uh, undergoing the molting or the change. It's like, oh, my God, this explains so much. And yet so little. <laughs> because here's the, this is what I mean. <clears throat> what I mean by retcon. And a retcon isn't always just wiping out previous information. Sometimes it's adding a nugget of info to change your interpretation of that past event. And we're su- supposed to buy into the idea that Garble has been acting tough while being more sensitive on the inside. And in some ways this can work because dragon culture is probably a really good example of the concept of toxic masculinity a term that gets used so often that I feel like it's lost a lot of meaning. At its core definition, it's basically reinforcing social attitudes about how men should behave to its own detriment. You know, this perception uh, hurts you in the long run. Case in point, it's the common belief, guys are not supposed to feel strong emotions and they're not supposed to express strong emotions. It's why when Spike is putting together a comfort blanket, which is very sensitive, uh, very supportive, guys aren't supposed to be like that, so he's ridiculed for it and uh, basically making him pretty miserable. That's toxic masculinity. But here's the thing. 
Garble tried to kill Phoenix chicks. It wasn't, uh, no one forced him to do it. No one pressured. If anything, he was the instigator. He was the one who started this whole thing. And he's also the one who battled, uh, Spike and Ember for the, for the, uh, scepter. So he's pretty darn aggressive, eh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now you're asking me to say, oh, but he has this really sensitive side. You know what? You can have a sensitive side if you want. You're still a jerk. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. I mean, if we only see Garble in this series or in this scenario here, yes, he is very sensitive. He is very, uh, what you might call this, creative, touch, in touch with his softer side or whatever you want to call it. But in terms of his lifespan on the show, yeah, no, no. Like, almost destroying the phoenix egg or just trying to be very aggro with getting the scepter and whatnot. I mean, it's kind of a huge retcon that kind of hurts his character. There's also that one moment too where in the... Um... Shoot, I forget the name of the episode, but it's when they're gathering all the artifacts for the, I guess you can call it the legendary sticks. Oh, uh, season seven's end? What was it called again? I forgot. Oh, Shadow Play. Yeah. That's it. Yes. When they're trying to get the shield from Garble, and then Garble's like, oh, you, Am- uh, Lord Ember said we can be nice to ponies, but not pony-loving dragons. And he was literally going to attack him, and then Rainbow Dash had to come and save him. Well, see, there's consistency... Mm. There's consistency in that one because Garble has always been a jerk towards Spike. So it does make sense there. But I, I think what we all have a problem here is just how Garble is in general before this. Like, he's always the jerk. He's always the quote-unquote bully for Spike and ponies. And he doesn't... <sighs> but at the same time, too... Yeah, man, like, this is one of those things where if you really think about it, there's there's make, there's sense and there's no sense at all. Or is that you, know, you can say any number of things. Oh, he's just he had a bad childhood. He's really misunderstood. At some point, you are accountable for your own actions. True. And no amount of excuse or hidden meaning can really justify that. True. I mean, with the... Okay, um... Let's just say reasoning. With with the scepter, I think it's a lust for power. Anybody in that scenario will be very aggro. Because if they get it, they can become the leader of their race. So, I grant that. Yes, would you agree? No. No, really, no. Because he declared, before he even got the scepter, his first act would be to basically launch a war against the ponies. Yeah, but ambition. Sometimes ambitions can blind you before you really get the scepter. See, I, I, I think that's more revealing what that was perhaps the most telling statement. No one was pressuring him. I mean, for crying out loud, the dragon before him just wanted pillows. <laughs> True. And no one wa- mocked him for it. That's the weird thing. <laughs> no, no comment. Oh, man. There, there's a lot of things that we can go through. But you know what? Let's just say that Garble here is retcon to a specific point where um, we're meant to like him? Uh, I don't know if I can like him. Tolerate I think him, it's more then. of I think it's more of the, the episode was trying to make us feel bad for him that he's getting picked on and everything. But yeah, we've known him as a bully, so how could we exactly feel bad for him? I, I don't think so that we're meant to feel bad for him. I mean... See, here's the okay. You know what? I'm gonna hold this part till the end. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna carry on. So, anywho, uh, moving on. Smolder wants to hang out with Garble and Spike to have that bonding moment and whatnot. And uh, the other three dragons says, "Oh, Smolder, you're getting soft." And this is one of those moments where, yeah, she can be soft, but those punches are really hard. Ouch. But anywho, uh, with that, we have our montage. Yay! So anywho, I'm just going to roll through this one because montages are kind of okay if hearing... They're not fun if somebody explains it to you. So yeah. So anywho, 
we first up we go to the lava pits where they just want to go swimming. <coughs> Spike knows that lava in nose is no fun and swallowing lava is not great. Yes. Then we get to see Fluttershy reading a story to the dragons, hoping they come out. But no, no, no. So they devise a plan. Something like that. Probably. Yes. So Smolder and Garble and so on, they have a tea party. But Garble says tea parties are for po- Nambi Pemi ponies. And I throw your red velvet on the ground. And this whole thing carries on where Spike tries to do something nice. Garble just slaps in the face. And yeah, you big jerk. <coughs> so, anywho, um, Tara, what do you think? Well, I do like how Spike is attempting to get to Garble's uh, sweet side, I guess you could call it. But, you know, he's still trying to be so big and tough and how he he doesn't exactly like Spike I guess from what happened in the past, maybe, or that, you know, he's acting all tough because of his quote unquote friends pick on him for what he kind of likes. And then I, I do also like how Fluttershy, she's kind of trying her way of um, getting the eggs to hatch, even though, you know, reading storybooks, I don't really think it would really help from uh, an egg. But then again, I don't much about dragons, so. <laughs> but Tara, would you hatch from an egg? True, but I don't know what goes on on the outside. Me too. I'm not a Pokemon, so I got no idea. No, I I don't even remember my egg stage, so... (laughs) Oh, I'm sure you have multiple brothers and sisters before you just to get that EV and IV. Uh, Well, I'm not too crazy about the IVs. I'm not that competitive. (laughs) Well, you see, there was this perpetual 10-year-old running around (laughs) saying, I want to be the greatest Pokemon master. But he could never remember anything about Pokemon, so he always pulled out this weird device. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's true. F- 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 fun fact. I-, I think he finally managed to win the Aloha region. Yeah, oh, yeah I've been he- that. I heard that's been going around. <laughs> finally. Uh, he actually won the league. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. but anyway, and it's Silver. been like, uh, how, how, uh, I would say years, but for all we know, Ash could probably still be 10 years old. <laughs> he is still 10 years old. <laughs> it's like, doesn't he have any birthdays? What are those? <laughs> what are you, Silver? What about you? When Spike is saying, is there anything worse than uh, lava up the nose? <laughs> I cannot speak from first-hand experience, but I have witnessed someone inhale wasabi oh, up their nose. God. Oh, man. The way he was convulsing in pain and, base- and in- inhaling milk, that stuff can literally burn the inside of your, your nostrils. So don't do that. Oh, it wasn't uh, me, I, I swear. I, I've I've experienced that before, and um, to replicate it, um, wasabi on your sushi, eat it up, and then inhale. Ooh, not fun. You know, I actually never oh, tried yeah. wasabi. Oh, it's fun. It's really nice. In I should moderation. Have done it at the cor- I should have okay. done it at the corner grill. Yeah, in moderation, by the way. Not to worry. There'll be other opportunities. Yes. But, uh, so there's that. And again, <laughs> dra- dragons... Thank goodness Fluttershy wasn't trying to hang with them. I'm having flashbacks to uh, Starlight and Ember, the fictional scenario. God, what, what was that from? Uh, that is from Celestial Advice, where Twilight was envisioning doomsday scenarios. Oh, Doom! <laughs> Doom! Oh, I still have my Doom flag right here. <laughs> e. It's also later when the dragons are now throwing lava balls at Spike, and Fluttershy is right next to him. Oh. Like, you... Stop you morons! Haven't haven't reached that part yet, but still, yep, those are morons. Well, are we going by breaks? <laughs> but I mean, it's it's mostly at least the eggs are shaking. Mm, that's true. I forgot to mention that. So they're not dead yet, and it's always nice when you can say the future generation is not dead. <laughs> so true, so true. Oh, boys, yeah. But you haven't mentioned anything about Garble Silva. Because there's really not a lot to mention at this point. Continuing with the toxic masculinity thing, any time Spike reaches out uh, in a, something that's considered not dragon or not tough, Garble makes a very public show of destroying it. Although he does so behind his sister's back. Well, except for the cupcake. Which he smashes. 
Mm. Well, she, he he only did the cupcake because literally Smolder was licking the plate with her eyes uh, closed. Yeah, true. Yeah. True, true that. Uh, but... but I actually do like how there's that one part after uh, Garble pushes Spike away while they're flying, and Spike says to himself, I'll be the bigger dragon. True that, true that. Spike is the bigger dragon. He He's the bigger man. Though, that may not be the best thing to say to yourself, because it's still a comparison. And comparison is the thief of joy. Eh, true, true. Yeah, but anywho, let's move on. So, we see Garble's other friend hanging out in the lava pool, uh, getting themselves some lava surfing. Yay, lava surfing. And Garble and Smolder go in, and... Mulder invites Spike, but Spike wants to lay back and relax for a bit. So the shy comes over and says, Spike, I got no idea how to do with those eggs. Come help me, please. And now the part where Big Bad Jerk Garble just throws lava balls at Spike and almost hitting Fluttershy. I'm like, what the? Yeah, so Fluttershy raises her voice and tells them to stop it. And yeah, uh, Fluttershy here is hardcore. Yeah. So with that, Fluttershy and Spike switch places. So Fluttershy is going to beat some kindness into Garble while Spike goes help Ember with the eggs. So we spot Ember here doing some baby talk to the eggs and it's just so cute and adorable in that strange way so Spike says what are you doing and that's not gonna work he goes to the nesting area and touches the floor of the area and says there's something wrong here the floor is cold and uh oh we got our problem here and so guys what do you think Silva when Fluttershy says enough the dragons may have let go of magma balls, but they're really pooping bricks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Fluttershy does have a, a history of p- putting dragons, talking them down from their mighty perch. Sure that. But, but then she's gotten even better at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like you're throwing magma near a pony. I really feel like you're not driving home sympathy this episode is asking us to feel sorry for garble or to root for him and yet all we're mostly seeing what we've already seen before the cruel the aggressive it's really hard to uh feel any investment mostly i feel for spike who's just being picked on again and again for trying to be kind Uh, tell me that isn't middle school all over again (laughs) the memories Now, I will say that Ember, trying to give baby talk, I said, Coochie Coo, you little brats. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. Me like. But then I thought to myself, well, Fluttershy wouldn't know the dragon grounds are supposed to be this warm. But then Spike does. And I was like, well, who would... I guess it, it's that question... Ponies know very little about dragons, but then how does Spike know to ask this question? It could be. I do not know. I, I have a theory on this one. It could be all the dragon research that Spike and Twilight did beforehand. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, they did mention in a previous episode where they've been trading knowledge and whatnot, right? One, one could hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, this is the part where I'm thinking... Oh, this is logical. This should be this. They should do that in the show. But was that in fan fiction? Oh no! <laughs> but then there's also the question: on their way there, didn't did Smolder not even talk about the hatching? No, because that would be Fluttershy's yep. obsession. Yeah. One would one would hope she'd ask questions, but no, yeah, no she did not. No. But finally, Fluttershy declaring war a war of kindness. Like, oh, you know not what you have unleashed, Garble. <laughs> it is the doomsday for you. You are about to get the Shyabedes. <laughs> oh, no. Not the Shyabedes. How I envy you. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, um, Tara? Well, I do like how Fluttershy is more assertive. Uh, you know, continuity. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I also like how she's sticking up for Spike and... Basically, uh, killing them with kindness, literally. (laughs) 
and being like, Garble, Spike was only here to support you. And, you know, Garble's like, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then they, they, they're they like, tag out, man, tag out. They swept spots. Now Fluttershy's handling Garble while Spike uh, hangs out with Ember. While Ember's, you know, well, it's, I mean, Silver Kai took the words out of her mouth this one. How she's all like, coochie coo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she'll make a great mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, now that you said that, uh, this brings up another question. Who laid all those eggs? Because there's not a lot of female dragons around in the dragon lands. You do not want to know. <laughs> but I do like th- uh, how, because Fluttershy, I guess she didn't really know because she doesn't know a lot about dragons, but Spike knew that the floor is cold, and once Ember uh, felt the ground, she's like, oh yeah, you're right, it is cold. Wonder what the problem could be. Hmm. Chin scratch. Hmm. Spike, I never knows. Also, I, I thank you, Torterra. I completely forgot to talk about an earlier joke that just stunned me. When Fluttershy asks Ember, are all these yours? <laughs> And and, em- and Ember just blushes. It's the only time I think I've seen her blush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, you put that in a kid's show. And I think it went over most of the kids' heads. Well done. I know. Yeah. Well done, indeed. Yep, yep. Oh, man. Who? <laughs> like, what does that even mean, right? <laughs> well, it means as a dragon lord, yeah, you've got a uh, certain... Responsibilities. Oh my god, could giggity. <laughs> uh, so, oh man, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go there. Oh goodness. I am. No, uh, okay. You, 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 okay, you, you, you say that for Ember, yeah. But could you just imagine if just Spike still holds the crown scepter? Well then, uh, I guess by necessity, bring me all the lady dragons? How old is he? <laughs> Are wow. you an adult? I am an adult. <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> yeah, but anywho, I'm going to carry on before we go to dark, dark places. Oh, we're already there, bucko. Oh, God, no. Yeah, you already know how silver is. Yep. <laughs> anywho, uh, Flutter Shy flies around trying to look for Smolder and Garble. Wait, wait. No, wait, I'm continuing this oh, idea. God, no. That's why Garble really wanted the scepter. Oh, God. He really wanted a date. Oh, no. Oh, all righty then. Oh, boys. But uh, anywho, uh, continuing on, Fluttershy flies around looking for um, Garble and, yeah, just looking for Garble. She spots Garble hanging out with Somber. Oh, I, <laughs> uh, Sombra and Smolder need to get that out of my head. Anywho, Smolder, yes. Hanging out with Smolder. Oh. And Are you having a ship? A ship mine? No. Yes. Uh, yes. No. Sounds Sorry. like it. No, they don't work. But anywho, um, she finds Garble and Smolder hanging out together, doing some interpretive dance. No, not interpretive dance. Some poetry. Poetry reading. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Garble sees and he kind of denies everything. You don't know what you're doing. Deny, deny. It's it's not like I like you or anything, Baka. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, Ember and Spike flies around and discovers that, hey, the uh, three idiot dragons are doing a bad thing. They're removing some rocks that holding some lava in place. And, yeah, they, they're the reason that the dragon eggs are not hatching. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're dumb. They're dumb. And with that, Ember commands the dragons to fetch some other dragons to the nesting area. And uh, I'm still going to carry on for this. Uh, in the next scene, Fluttershy goes up to Garble and says that, Oh, you, you like to do poetry? That's cool. Garble designs it and Fluttershy starts her own poetry. And yep, they kind of connect for a bit, but he's not brave enough to do it and stuff. And yeah, let's just say that Fluttershy gives the smackdown to Garble and talks to him and stuff. Spike flies in, says that uh, Princess M, uh, Dragonlord Ember is calling for everyone and let's go. Silver, what do you think, my friend? Well, let's see. One, Fluttershy is way better poet than Garble. I mean, he's like, I've got to create. 
okay, yeah, so does a amateur artist who thinks that they're the next Picasso, but that don't make you good right away. You got some practice before you, lad, and you're not going to get better unless you get feedback. So there's a part of his conundrum, but it, it, the Fluttershy is pretty. I think her poetry slam was better. Yeah, she has practice and she knows how to play a role. And I did like how she gets right in in uh, in Garble's face <laughs> when defending Spike in his honor. True, true. Meanwhile, those three dragons they are going to be. Uh, I don't. Ember is just going to punish them in so many ways after this they are they are not going to see the day for uh for a long time oh yeah i have no idea how she'll punish them but basically we aren't going to see them again (laughs) i'm pretty sure if she watches the miraculous ladybug then she'll know how to punish them (laughs) why 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 ladybug i mean come on norman (laughs) given what we've seen so far yeah it could be pretty dang punishing yeah i thought that bad you sick. You sick. sick. Oh boy, I I should show more to you. Then there's a lot more than. <laughs> yep. Wow, you, we we're we're saying it's all about punishment. And you're like, oh, I should show you more. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I I had I had no idea you were a sadist. <laughs> Me neither. Oh boy. <clears throat> sadist Sanzo. Oh no, no, no. Um. So anywho, um, that was <laughs> Tara. What about you? Well, just a little minor thing, but I do like how we see more of Ember addressing her, I guess you could say, subjects. Because the last time we saw it was in the... Um, she, I'm terrible with the episode names, but it's the one where... The, um, I think Not Dragon Quest. Uh, it's the one where... Gauntlet of Fire? That's it. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. But the only time we saw Ember addressing her subjects was that episode where she's basically saying, agree with me. And he's like, just kidding. But at least here now, she tells him to put the boulder back and then she's asking how long they've done it and so on and so forth. I like how we see her as a leader now instead of just a daughter of an old dragon lord. And uh, aside from that, I also like too how Fluttershy is, um, again, killing with kindness, but being like, Oh, Garble, the only one sneaking around here is you. I'm not doing anything. I just happen to stumble upon you. <laughs> I, I do like, though, how she's then, like, Spike. I mean, Spike. I'm getting it mixed up. Ah. It's okay. <laughs> but I also like how when Garble insults uh, Spike while Fluttershy is there, she'd be like, oh, you did not just insult one of my friends. Yeah. And she basically just sticks up for him and be like, Spike is more braver than you because he at least admits what he likes and that's more braver than you. True that, true that, and yeah. Wait, 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 I'm sorry, I have to be grammar police. More braver? I, I can't English today. <laughs> I know, but you, did, you said it twice is the thing. Okay, well, I, I guess I just need to work on my English. <laughs> I'm, I'm European, not don't say, judge me. I'm not going to say anything about that. If it were me, yeah, make fun of me because I'm not from an English country. <laughs> I mean, it's better than what you said earlier, Silver, when you said that no one will take Fluttershy's take face. Fluttershy's fa- <laughs> yes, I said that. I said that once, and no one can take Fluttershy's face. It's too cute. <laughs> it won't look. It won't look as cute as anyone else. But we as a grammar police, we will be very, very proper. No, please don't. Oh, boys. <clears throat> okay. Anywho, um, as for me, agreed. I agree. So, anywho. We go to the next scene. All the dragons are there. Quote, unquote, all. Quote, unquote, all. None of the big ones. <laughs> yeah, true. So, anywho, uh, we don't see any blue eyes, red eyes, or baby dragons. But they're there, I guess. So, they're there trying to cook some poached eggs or something like that. And Spike and his crew arrive. And just says, uh, and Ember just retells what's going on. Um, she says to the group that, hey, um, we've been trying to heat up the eggs by ourselves with our own fire, but it doesn't seem to work. And uh, one of the bully dragons goes up to Spike and says, oh, why don't you do, why, why don't you need them a blanket or something? They keep them warm and blah, blah, blah. And uh, the dragons do a laugh of fire. That's what they happen when they laugh. They, they spew out red pink color of fire and then goes blue and something like that while this is happening garble has an idea an epiphany if you might say so he puts on his beret and striped shirt and a scarf and do some poultry poetry yes 
And with this happening, everybody looks and laughs at Garble. And they laugh at the eggs and yay, the egg hatch. So I'm just going to stop here because the next scene is going to be the end. So guys, what do you think? Silver. Well, here's the, here's the thing. This actually explains a little bit about how Spike came to be. Oh. Well, think about it. Celestia had him, had his egg for X number of years and the, he couldn't be hatched through normal means. Now, the, these dragon eggs only hatch through extreme heat. I mean, Spike said earlier that laughter heat is actually one of the hottest dragon flames. So th- imagine how much they need to get going just to wake up, just to hatch those eggs. How hot do you think was twi- the magical blast Twilight used to hatch Spike? Ooh. All right. But on top of that, transform him into a big giant baby dragon. Oh well, yeah, things went even further yeah. there. It went out of control. So Spike was probably having a very weird day. <laughs> I'm I'm alive, I'm hatched, I'm big, I'm small. Okay, who are you, Gaga? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Um <laughs> But But indirectly this episode might be again adding a bit of information to events we've seen before. And and I think in this case it makes a little bit more sense. But uh Garble's poetry slams are still Kind of bad. Yeah, he's he's developing them somehow. Yeah, you know, learning. And I guess it it is it is a weird statement that he's banking on everyone laughing at him. That's true. There's something that, that it's, it's a huge gamble. But he knows the dragon so well that okay, I'm just gonna humiliate myself to save the future. So let's go. Commendable, by the way. There's that. There's the fur, and he actually calls Spike Spiky White, which is. <laughs> A unique thing. I was like, okay, Mr. Tong, we, we want you to say spiky wiky. <laughs> Make it really friendly, please. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Vidi did this. Oh, man. If it's, if it's it gets cast a lot of characters that fans don't seem to like, which hey. he's a really nice guy. He doesn't deserve this. <laughs> yeah, okay, wait, can... you saying no one likes Sandboy? Well, that Sandbar was the turning point, thankfully. Hey, but Flash was a cool dude. But no one liked him. I do. No. I know there are fans who do like him, but he caught a lot of flack, mostly because he was trying to, he was trying to win over Twilight. Yeah, he was trying to steal your pony waifu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not bothered by that. Although he is trying to take my waifu now. <laughs> oh wait, who is it now? Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> <laughs> You okay there? Uh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Wee <Wee-oo. laughs> So, anywho, yeah, um, uh, what about you, Tara? Well, actually, uh, I'm just gonna rewind a bit here, but I know that back when Smolder called Garble by his nickname, Gargar, and then Smolder's like, uh, Smolder, Garble is like, not in public, and Spike's like, oh, no worries, everyone, my nickname calls me Spiky Wikey. And Garble's like, really? You're admitting this? And now here, Garbo calls him by his nickname. It's like, oh, that that's kind of sweet how he warms up to him and calls him by his nickname. And then after, he, he's not ashamed that he's performing in front of other dragons now. But again, but I mean, he has to because he's like, hey, that's a good idea. Laughing Fire will burn the eggs and then we'll have egg, uh, scrambled eggs for everyone. <laughs> Yay. But at the same time, too, like, here's what I'm just going to say. Um, what Gargar here did was very admirable, putting himself in a situation where he will be humiliated and ridiculed by his peers just to save the future. That's something you have to commend for. But at the same time, mm-hmm. too, I-, I don't know. Like, there's no negative I can find with this. Like, it feels kind of out of character for him to do so, probably, knowing what we know and what we've been saying from this whole recording but at this moment here is the turning point where okay he's not a bad dude and silver what do you have to say man like i know you said your piece but what do you have to say after i say my piece honestly it's not i get the sense it's a turning point but it doesn't feel like it's (sighs) quite enough it's like okay he's just called spike spiky wiki is that meant to say they buried the hatchet completely Uh, that's it there's Uh. a there there's a lot to unpack unfortunately so Garble would need a little, a lot more uh, screen time 
acting in a positive to change my opinion. Because again, the an amount of rude and cruel things he's done really outstrips the whole, oh, but I'm a, I'm an artist. What do you do? You know how many, you know how many artists are, are jerks too? <laughs> uh, yep. Actually, let's just see here. Top 10 popular artists who are considered jerks. Kanye West. Makes sense. Quentin Tarantino. Roman Polanski. Ernest Hemingway. Michelangelo. Wait, wait, wait. Not what? the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> wait. Not the Ninja Turtle one, right? Uh, 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 yeah, I, I was about to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Axl Rose. Uh -huh. Frank Miller. <laughs> wait, Frank Miller? He's a jerk? I thought he was okay. Uh, turns, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. But in recent years, his descent from casual misogyny and homophobia to bat beat crazy, paranoia of the entire Islamic world and outright hatred of the Occupy movement, timed so perfectly with his slide into sloppy, misguided, naked propaganda that it was easy to completely dismiss everything he wrote as the ramblings of a cranky old loon who had finally succumbed to the insanity we all kind of suspected was there for years. Oh, gosh. All right. Oh, wow. Even notorious curmudgeon Alan Moore has implied that Miller is as bordering on sociopath. <laughs> Alan Moore. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, you could, you could be a, a talented artist and you could still be a jerk. True, 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 true. Uh, but still, it's one of those things where now that he, uh, <laughs> a lack for a better word, come out of the closet and show that he is a Namby Pamby Pony loving dragon. He, we, we'll, we'll see what happens after this. We'll see what happens after this. So, anywho, um, I'm just going to summarize it for a bit. Love dragon fire, make egg hatch. Yay, stay safe by Garbo. Yay. So, in the next scene, um, Garbo is a hero and the, well, his quote unquote friends are trying to make fun of him, but there's a shadow looming over them and it's Amber. She tells them to shut up or I'll kick your asses because you're the one at fault for this and I'll decide on what to do with you later tells she goes up to Garble and says could you teach me how to do poetry because that seems cool yes 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 and Fluttershy kidnaps a few dragons to bring home okay okay <laughs> episode ends on so Fluttershy's kidnapped. a villain <laughs> yep Woo! so anywho Silver oh no Um, you know what Tara, what are you going to do? <laughs> Sorry, no, what, what do you have to say? What am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going to run! <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like how um, Garbo opened up and then when they the dragons pick on him, Ember's like, he's the hero of the, of the dragon lands. He came out of his shell and... Uh, that was a pun intended, by the way, because, you know, Torteras have shells. <laughs> mm -hmm. He came out of his shell, and he made all of you laugh so hard that you made the eggs crack. And then it's also kind of sweet how em Ember's like, can you teach me some poetry? It's actually pretty cool. I mean, I don't know much about poetry. I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I'd learn it that fast, but I'm not a poet, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> but I, I really liked how it turned out in the end. True, 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 true. Silver, what about you? Well, here's the thing. When the dragons are all like, oh, wait, I want to learn poetry too. They're doing it because Ember is currently backing him. So they're doing it just to get in good with the boss. And believe me, those three especially are going to need to find a way back into our good graces. Oh, yeah. So it strikes me as very disingenuous. You're, you're doing something out of fear. I won't say that. I guess that's why this isn't, in my eyes, a big redemption for the Dragonlands. Uh, Smolder and Ember are really the, the most positive traits. And it is true... Fluttershy, don't manhand <laughs> or pony handle or dragon handle those babies. <laughs> but they're so adorable and cute. They're adorable and cute, but that doesn't mean you get. Wait a minute, did they just imprint on her? Uh -oh. She's their first co physical contact. No, I, I thought imprinting was when the hatchling sees their first thing they see. Which, well, in their case, they're there. Then they saw blue flame right in their faces. <laughs> it's like, what? Ow! Ow! Oh, reality hurts. <laughs> Uh, ah, it's good you learned that lesson early, kids. <laughs> Life is pain. Yep. Oh, boys. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, as for me, yeah, I, I can't say much because everything that's been happening here is kind of 
cool. It's, it's, it's logical. It's logical. Like, it's awesome that Garble opened himself up to ridicule and shame. And also, it's really cool for Ember to back him up and want to take an interest in what he's, he likes. So that's cool. And Fluttershy, yeah, no idea, man. But anywho, if that episode ends, episode ends. So anywho, um, let's go to final thoughts. Silver. Well, there's a lot to celebrate in this. There's Fluttershy and her, her growth and assertiveness. There's Spike meeting their cruelty with kindness. I, I, again, I'm not a big fan of the Be the Bigger Dragon because it still sounds like a competition. But Spike is not let is not letting others dictate his attitude, even though it is it can wear on him. And we got almost two different retcons here. A new bit of information that makes Spike's hatching make a little bit more sense and perhaps have greater meaning. Dragon eggs are tough. I mean, usually if a if an animal is if an egg is too cold, well, the embryo or or whatever is within could die. The dragon eggs, they apparently just don't hatch. Like, <laughs> we ain't gonna die. <laughs> We're too tough for that. <laughs> yep. But they, but they, they need heat to hatch, to stir. So maybe it's just like a very, very deep sleep before you're even born. Hey. Well, I mean, they could have just sat on the eggs. <laughs> no. Can you imagine how frustrated Amber would get having to sit on every single one of those eggs? Oh, oh please, no. <laughs> But the other retcon to to say that Garble has always been this sweet, sensitive guy. I'm sorry. There's a lot mounted. There's a lot stacked up against that, and it's not going to change anytime soon. It's not that I I'm dismissing that he could be redeemed. It's just that we need a lot more time before we can go with something like that. And unfortunately, this is the final season, so we're not going to get that time. That's the sad part about this. The situation that we are in now, we we would uh, I say this a lot, but I would love to see an episode dedicated to this scenario here, having Garble be something something for the Dragonlands, probably arts and crafts something like that, like patron of the arts. Like we could have done so much, but uh, well, it's up to our intonations. Anywho. Um, Tara, what about you? Final thoughts, by the way. Well, I, in the end, like I said, I, I find it decent. I mean, I find it kind of odd how they kind of squeezed Garble in with saying, you know, he's the brother and we, we all know him as like the bully and everything in the past. And then Smolder saying, he's very sweet. And was like, well, we don't see him as sweet or anything, but we see him in the end that, yeah, okay, he's a very sweet guy. And I know this won't happen because it's the last season, but I also too would have liked to seen an episode where, uh, it would be like with that that trio of Garbo, Spike, and Fluttershy, and maybe they could teach him, you know, hey, you gotta be. This is how you could be more nice, and you can be more open, and maybe Garbo could perform in front of all the ponies, and Garbo could be like, hey, you know what, being with ponies ain't so bad. But we probably won't get that unless we leave it to the fanfic writers. Yeah, but fanfic writers don't really like Garbo, so yeah, there's not much fic about him. Yeah, not a lot of people really like Vincent Tong characters. <laughs> no, no, we love Vinny, except Sandbar. Yes, except same boy. But this new information can perhaps generate interest. Probably, but like this episode has been out for a while now, and there's not much fic out there. I mean, maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe I haven't seen it. But I view filmfic.net, filmfiction.net, and he's not up there. He's not that popular in terms of characters I would love to see by the readers of filmfiction.net and yeah um, he's not that popular he's not that popular I, I could even try and see if there's a group for him maybe there's a group who knows it'll probably be the We Hate Garble Club let's see I, I type in Garble alright okay Um. oh my goodness <laughs> uh, created in November 2017 Sorry, November 2016. There's 20 members and there's only 17 stories. Yep. Yep. Only 17? Yep. That, that sounds pretty good to my eyes. Uh, yeah. Or yours. Te te technically, no. Because um, if you have 17 out of a full bunch of fic writers, I mean, 50 is okay. 17? Oh, no. 
I don't know, one could get as many as 17 stories to read. Yeah. Honestly, Norman, you're being very glass half empty. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, um, as for me, I love this this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. Uh, we get to see Smolder. We get to see Ember again. We, we get to see more of the dragons. Like, I, I like this episode a lot. This episode is just a lot of fun. And Garbo here? Sorry, Garbo. Is it Garbo? Garbo, right? Yeah, Garbo. Uh, yeah, the red one. And Garbo here, I don't know, man. Like, I want to like him, but knowing what he did in the past kind of bugs me a bit. And, yeah, we need more episodes of him to at least get us to appreciate who he is and can be. Anyway, the, oh, oh, forget to mention, Fluttershy. Fluttershy is awesome. Fluttershy is awesome. We, we can see her interacting with Discord has changed her a lot. Mm, I don't know. I find Fl- Fluttershy a bit overrated. Oh. <laughs> well, wow, wow, Norman. Norman, I don't usually say this, but take a chill pill. Yeah, I thought I was going to trigger Silver, and instead I triggered you. <laughs> <sighs> oh, we're going to do Ladybug next Apparently- week. Oh, apparently he needs a lozenge now. Oh, God. Anywho, um, that's the end. So, let's go to the next thing. Credits. So, anyway, um, Silver, what are you going to do for next week's thing? Well, I think we're going to switch things over. But once again, we face a challenge. A test of our of our consciousness and atten- awareness. Can we say Little Witch Academia without the my? Oh, you mean My Little Witch Academia? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So hey, next week we will be doing My Little Wish Academia episode three. Ah, he's do- he's doing it again. He's doing this on purpose. I know. Yeah, he's definitely doing it on purpose. I know. Oh, boys, aren't you glad that we're not reviewing My Hero Academia? My Hero Academia. I wouldn't be against oh, that. Oh yes, and yeah, it is My Hero. Yeah, maybe we should. My Hero Academia. <laughs> my Hero Academia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, maybe maybe we should try doing My Little Witch Academia or... You know what? I'm just confused right now. So next week, Little Witch, episode 3. Yay. <coughs> Patreon sponsored by Jeffrey. Yay. So anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitiongmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on YouTube, just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, which will, you can also find me on Patreon, where you can support my videos. Uh, you can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday, where I will post a comic reviewer editorial. Also on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Look for Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics every Friday before a new episode. Nice, nice. And uh, approaching at the end of October... You can find me in, in Milwaukee at Ponyville Cider Fest. Ooh, fun, fun. Ye. So when's that, by the way? Uh, November 1st through the 3rd. Ah, so a day after Halloween. Ooh, so you're not going to do Halloween, Silva? Well, I'm going to be traveling on Halloween, but that means I'll get to see how Milwaukee handles Halloween. <laughs> All right, then. cool. Is, again, glass half full, <laughs> or candy bag half full, oh, no. at least. Candy bag half full is not great. You need to put it to the brim. Oh, come on. Again, Norman, you, you sound negative. <laughs> you sound negative. Does he, t- Tartara, hug him. Ah, oh, come here, Norman. I give you a hug. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? People find you how? Shipping. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the good people could easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tartara1324, or they could just do a Google search. I'm pretty sure I'll be on all those searches. Or they could also find me on Patreon where they can donate either a tiny little dollar or, honestly, they can donate it as much as they want to me. Or if not, at least they support me, and I appreciate the support. Yay. Awesomeness. Go check him out, guys. Anyway, um, let's see. If you'd like to support my show, <laughs> this show in particular, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a weekly access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, I still like Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I am Torchera1324. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. 
Adios. Bye bye. Episode ends. Now we do now something else. Let's cook some chicken. Mm, yummy, yummy, me likey. We can have it sweet and smoky. I actually heard poetry worse than garbage. I'm not good at poetry. I wonder who, me or Sarah? <laughs> yes. <laughs>